302, I'm Jackie Ferris. This week on the show, we're in Newcastle talking about Separation Day festivities. There's going to be a lot of history, a lot of fun, and of course, the Tall Ship Series. Hang on tight, the 302 is sailing your way. Hey 302, every 4th of July the nation celebrates its independence, but in Delaware there is a second party with a very historical significance that of course happens in June and it's Separation Day. And we're joined now by Cindy Snyder who's going to tell us all about Separation Day and the historical celebration that follows. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jackie. Separation Day is an annual event here in Newcastle and we celebrate actually Delaware's birthday. Separation Day is June 15th, 1776, and it's when the Colonial Assembly here at the courthouse voted to separate from Great Britain and Pennsylvania on that day and become the Delaware State. This was three weeks before the actual Declaration of Independence and Delaware signing that. So, that is considered Delaware's birthday. Moving up until 1976 at the Bicentennial, they decided to do a celebration in Newcastle to commemorate that very important day for Delaware. So we started having the Separation Day event. And it was uh, a, just a big party in the town. We had parades, we had music, we had people dressed in colonial costumes, and we celebrated and commemorated that, that very important day. And this celebration has been continuing since 1976. So we are in our 44th year wow. of that. That's great. And you continue the tradition of historical events and a parade. Talk to me about, you know, what people can enjoy when they come out. Well, we start at um, this year. We do not have it on the exact day, but we it's always on the second weekend of June. So we start off on uh, Friday the 7th, and that is like a big street party mm -hmm. to celebrate. And we have uh, various food trucks, and we have um, a, a beer garden. And actually, the uh, beer garden is run by the local fire department so that all proceeds and tips will go to them. And we have wonderful bands out, and, and we just celebrate and dance in the street. And that goes from 6 to 9.30. So when people come out, they um, really can take in a lot of history. Will there be people here to talk about, you know, for instance, the history of the courthouse? Yes. Now on Saturday, the, uh, the celebration of um, Separation Day, we start off with a parade and it's really a slice of Americana because what we have is bands, local groups, um, different organizations in the town, uh, different reenactment groups, and uh, it's just a whole community joins in on that. And after that, the different museums through the town are open for tours. And here at the courthouse, we give tours on the history of Delaware, and especially on that day, the history of Separation Day. So you can come in and find out all about how we started out and then became the first state. It really is so entrenched with, with history. I was talking to, to Joan, one of the people that works mm -hmm. at the, the courthouse, and she was saying, she took me through how the town has really changed through the years and how um, at the time, uh, everything going other places, you know, the capital going to Dover mm -hmm. and the county seat going to Wilmington, that it kind of saved, uh, I guess, the history here. Yes. Yes. What had happened is many of the buildings down here in the historic district, they are uh, 18th century buildings, colonial buildings, and 19th century buildings, federal buildings. And 
because of this not becoming the actual state capital in the modern day, that saved this town from having buildings torn down and streets and the city disrupted uh, to build government buildings and to put in new roadways and such. This town is laid out as William Penn laid it out in 1782. 1682. No, I have a question. I saw the William Penn statue mm -hmm. and he's got uh, keys and a, a whole bunch of stuff in one hand and then it looks like a branch of some kind. Yes. Well, tell me about the statue. That statue uh, is by Charles Park, a very uh, famous um, sculptor. And it shows William Penn holding what is called the livery of season. This comes from uh, archaic English law. When property transferred from one owner to the other, they gave a symbolic offering of the uh, twig represented the all that grows on the land, dirt represented the land itself, water represented any waterways on the land, and the key represented the government. So you would give this to the new owner of the land and it was part of any legal contract of land transference. So when William Penn came to America to claim this area, the lower counties, as part of his Pennsylvania province, and he also did this up in Pennsylvania, he went through this ceremony with the officials that were here. And that transferred the land legally to him. And that's just one of the many things that people can see here. Yes, and hear yes. about. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Gail and the 302 is music to my ears. We're back and we're talking about the Separation Day Festival and one of the big draws to any festival, of course, would be the food. We talked about food trucks, but I'm really interested in the barbecue competition and we're joined now by Julie Wanger, who's going to tell us all about not just the barbecue competition, but there's just so much more to the festival. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We're so excited. Um, Separation Day festival is taking place on June the 8th at Battery Park in Newcastle, Delaware. And a part of the, the day, we start at 12 o'clock, um, right after our Colonial Parade. We go from noon until 5 o'clock and we have free rides for kids. Mm -hmm. And then we have a huge barbecue competition. It is actually part of the Kansas City barbecue uh, competition. So it's we, a really big deal. It right? is a big deal. We attract folks that want to come in and compete um, from all over the East Coast, from Ohio to West Virginia. Maryland, DC, um, New York, New Jersey, they come in. Most of them come in with their RVs. They show up on Friday. They camp out overnight in the park wow. to get ready for Saturday. And it's competitive barbecue. So these folks are um, preparing their chicken, their, um, their pork butts, their brisket, and they are cooking overnight so that they can turn in their entries to the judges on Saturday. I guess it's everything from smoky to sweet, maybe even some surprises this year. Some savory, I'm sure, will show up as well. Absolutely. So barbecue is a real big component of the event, but we also then have local nonprofits, um, the Colu um, Knights of Columbus and our Boy Scouts that come and prepare foods mm -hmm. that are for purchase for the folks that are coming to the event. And this actually helps sustain our nonprofits throughout the year. So they look forward to this day, to inviting people into the town and uh, doing hamburgers, hot dog, and barbecue themselves that they are able to sell to folks. Um, so we also have straight rides here at the mm -hmm. event and a petting zoo. Oh, that's nice. It is nice. It's very family friendly, but it's also a beautiful setting right on the Delaware River. So we've got a great big stage set up with live music uh -huh. and we program live music from noon until 9.30 in the evening. 
Uh, uh, do you happen to know who's going to be playing this year? We do. Our headliner for the for the show is Club Fred. And Club Fred is just a, a renowned band who has a great following. Um, it's a nine-piece band that'll be playing for our Saturday night festivities. And as he culminates with his concert, we start with fireworks right over the Delaware River. So people come with their blankets that and their chairs nice. and camp out getting ready for fireworks. Um, and it's a beautiful, magnificent show um, right over the, the water. So there's lots to see and do throughout the course of the day, but we've got all kinds of arts and craft vendors that come in mm -hmm. as part of the Separation Day festivities as well, petting zoo for the kids. Um, it's just reenactments that we um, bring in with some of our colonial friends. Now I know a big thing for families when they come to this thing, is uh, these kinds of uh, festivals, is they like things that they can do hands-on. And you mentioned arts and crafts. What kinds of things in the past have kids been able to do when they come out? So our JCs do a, an entire kids' corner area where they can do sand art and uh, different hands-on. You're exactly right. There's lots of hands-on activities that they can participate mom and kids or dad and kids it's just really wonderful they can make necklaces and lots of different you know um, um, fishing for goldfish and uh, ball throws and things of that nature now when you when you you know participate and come down you eat you you buy things you do all the crafts you're also giving back to your community as well you mentioned the nonprofits who are the nonprofits that we could be helping by coming out and just having a good time so uh, there are a number of nonprofits that are involved in this from boy scouts to the knights of columbus to our local library that's doing a book sale that day i mean our community really embraces separation day this is the center point of our community and and we invite people to come in and explore Newcastle that day. So uh, there are um, Faithful Friends and SPCA. There are just lots of different folks that are involved in Separation Day. And what about sponsors? Do you have sponsors for the event? We do have sponsors for the event. The event is our presenting sponsor for Separation Day is Discover Card Bank. Mm -hmm. um, so Discover Card um, is, our, is our new presenting sponsor this oh, year. Nice. Yep, we're very excited about that. And then we have local companies that are also sponsoring Canada Dry, Harvey Hanna, um, quite, quite a long list actually of mm -hmm. sponsors. Delaware City Refinery um, are all sponsors, um, as well as some very uh, local businesses like Spicer Mulligan and Gebhardt Funeral Home. Great, great. So if someone's coming out for the first time, mm -hmm. they're bringing in their family, do you have any tips for them? Do they need to bring a chair? Do they need, what do they need to bring? They need to be, bring a smile and be ready to have some fun. Um, they could bring a chair and a blanket if they're coming out to watch the fireworks, but really honestly during the day we've got a huge food tent mm -hmm. and tables and chairs set up for folks. We've got a beer garden and wine for sale. Um, there's lots of arts and craft vendors here for you to be able to peruse sure. and then you can absolutely smell the barbecue throughout the course of the day. <laughs> so you don't have to stock up and actually be all that prepared. We've got water and sodas and, and um, items for sale for Excellent. folks. So show up with a smile. Show up with a smile. Thank you, Julie, for joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back. I'm Sue Frost and I'm organizing you on the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about Separation Day and all the cool things you can see and do. One of them being the Tall Ship Series. We're joined now by the City Administrator Bill Barthel and also one of the captains of the ships, Johan Steinke. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Bill, first of all, let's talk about the Tall Ship Series, what it's all about. Okay, well, thank you. The Tall Ship Series is actually, this is the first year that we're uh, we're actually having the series. Mm -hmm. um, a little background, the, uh, the pier, uh, 
actually uh, was open two years ago, and uh, through the you know the past couple of years, we've been attracting uh, some tall ships, you know, like the Mirwald and and uh, the Kalmar Nickel and others. And this year, we thought we'd actually put together a series where hopefully you know we can uh, incorporate and bring in uh, you know additional ships. Um, and obviously, the idea to do that is to hopefully en enhance economic development or ec bring economic activity into the city, and uh, not only bring in people from outside of the city, but certainly give the ability for people within the city to, uh, you know, participate with, uh, with the Tall Ship series. Now, we talk about a, about a series. It's one per month, is that right? Well, actually, we're trying to uh, encourage more than one ship per month to come in, but right now we're actually, uh, we are actually at uh, one ship per month. That is correct. Excellent. Um, now, Johan, tell me a little bit about your ship. Sure thing, the A.J. Mirwall, she's a, uh, she's a 91 year old oyster schooner. So she's an original boat, uh, which makes her pretty unique. And uh, we do, we're an educational nonprofit. So we take young students out and do field trips with them, teaching them all about the environment, uh, about science, that kind of thing. Uh, we also take paying passengers out on sails, teach them you know, history, history of the Delaware Bay oystering, and, uh, and they get to go sailing. We get to see what it's like to actually sail on an old, uh, old schooner. So you can actually get on the ship and go on the water? That is correct. We'll be open for tours uh, Friday um, at, at uh, 6 in the evening and then uh, on noon Saturday. And then folks can also go sailing with us. We have sails scheduled. Uh, they can check out our website, uh, bayshorecenter.org and they can learn more about it there. Now this is a, a really rich part of the Separation Day history. There's so much history here. Do you feel like, you know, this kind of blends really well with all the other offerings, Bill? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, you know, we're, we're obviously an old water town and then the ability to attract these tall ships and with the history, as you allude to, with Separation Day, I mean, it's a natural. Uh, we really think it's gonna be a, a great part of, of the day and really add, or to the weekend actually, and really add to the whole uh, environment and the whole, you know, the whole uh, concept of Separation Day. Now, how did you guys decide that you wanted to, to bring in the Tall Ship series? Well, again, it kind of evolved from the fact that we initially we were kind of doing it uh, one at a time, if you will. And we thought that by putting this series together, it would, again, give us the ability uh, to, to advertise uh, each and one of, you know, every ship that we have coming in at one time through the whole summer, you know, starting in the, in the spring versus trying to do it one at a time, you know, as we, you know, through, throughout the summer. Sure, sure. Now, when people go and they get on one of the ships, I bet they're just eyes wide, super excited. Talk to me about, you know, some of the questions that people ask. What's the most interesting thing you think to the folks who come and check out the ships? Uh, most, most people ask the usual questions. How old is she? How long is she? How tall? You know, how tall is the boat? Why is it a she? All that kind of thing. Why is it a uh, she? Uh, I've heard so many different answers to that. I can't give you a definitive answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. talk, please <laughs> talk to an historian. Um, I've heard many different answers. But yeah, so, so a lot of people ask those kind of questions. Um, the boat definitely does not run on a track like the one in Disneyland. So definitely don't ask that one, please. <laughs> but. So how does it, I mean, obviously you've got the mast and, and it's called the tall ship. Is that because the mast is so tall? Or? Well, that one I could probably give an answer to. So uh, the word tall ship goes back. I mean, you can, you can see it as early as the 1630s or even earlier, 1500s. Um, and, but basically, if, if I say sailboat, what do you picture? You instantly picture a small little yacht, right? Small sailing vessel. Mm -hmm. So at, in the eight, during the age of sail, you know, boats were just called by their various rigs. So we are, we are a schooner. We're not a topsail schooner, we're not a brig, a brigantine, a bark, barkantine. Like there are all these different rigs uh, that, that people historically probably would have known, even landsmen would have known. Uh, because you know the sailing was so common, just the same way people know different car types, right. it's it's the same thing, even though they're all cars. But after the age of sail ended, um, you needed some means of differentiating our old ships, our traditional vessels, versus a little a sailboat, which people are going to picture something different. So a tall ship, it's poetic, it's an old-fashioned word, um, but but it also gives an image that's very very different from say a modern yacht. Now you have a book that you have written. Can you I, tell us about that? I do. I'd first like to preface this. This is not about me, this book. It is called The Greatest Captain in the World. Uh, it's a little children's book I wrote. It's kind of like a side project that came to life. And uh, yeah, so, so I wrote a little kid's book and I've, I've got a sequel coming out hopefully, hopefully next fall mm -hmm. uh, called The Greatest Captain in the World 2, T-O-O, 
and it'll be, you can put the books side by side and it'll have a little granny of a captain staring over at the grandpa of a captain. Oh. So it should be fun. Nice, nice, yeah. excellent. So if somebody wants to know where they can get your book, where do they, where do they go? Well, they can come down to our ship. Um, if they get on the boat, then they'll help the Bayshore Center. Uh, but they could also uh, either uh, find it on my website, uh, greatestcaptain.com, uh, or they can find it on Amazon as well. Well, thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. find out more about Separation Day, all you have to do is go to SeparationDayDE.com. Well, that'll do it for this edition of the 302. We leave you now with the picturesque Delaware River.